let's talk about naloxone administration. What is naloxone? Naloxone is an opioid receptor antagonist, meaning it binds to an opioid receptor and reverses or blocks the effects of opioids. Giving naloxone immediately reverses the effects of opioid drugs and restores normal breathing. It can be administered by injection or through a nasal spray. It's also called Narcan. What is an overdose or drug poisoning? An overdose or drug poisoning occurs when a person takes too much of an opioid, causing the person to slow down or completely stop their breathing. If the person who overdosed does not get naloxone or Narcan to reverse the effects of the opioid, they can die. Something important to remember, though, is an overdose does not always mean death as long as the person continues to breathe. In Indiana, the Senate Act 406 covers the use of overdose intervention drugs. Intervention drugs may be administered if you find an individual who there's reason to believe is at risk of experiencing an opioid-related overdose and you're a family member, a friend, or any other individual or entity in a position to assist that individual. And basically that law covers you as long as you act in good faith and you do the following. You obtain the overdose intervention drug from a prescriber. You administer the overdose intervention drug to an individual who experienced an apparent opioid related overdose. And you attempt to summon emergency services uh, either immediately before or immediately after administering the overdose intervention drug. Are you liable if you use the drug? Except for an act of gross negligence or willful misconduct, an individual or entity described in this chapter is immune from civil liability for the following actions. You obtained an overdose intervention drug under this chapter, you administered an overdose intervention drug in good faith, and you acted under a standing order under this chapter. Opiates and opioids. Morphine is the prototypical opioid. It decreases the feeling of and reaction to pain. It also acts as a nervous system depressant, which can depress breathing. It provides comfort and may cause euphoria. We know that people who are predisposed to addiction have a very euphoric feeling when using opioids. Opioids are used as a treatment for acute and chronic pain and as anesthetic agents during surgeries or painful procedures. Both opiates and opioids are often abused, resulting in significant health risks. Are opiates and opioids the same? Opioids are both natural and synthetic substances with morphine-like activity. Opiates include a subclass of opioids consisting of compounds specifically extracted and purified from the opium or poppy plant. And opioids and opioids act on the same receptors in the brain. Here are a list of some common opioids and opiates. So when using naloxone, remember the following common street drugs are not opioids or opiates, and therefore overdoses of these substances cannot be treated with naloxone. Cocaine, LSD, ecstasy, meth, sedatives or tranquilizers, uh, Xanax, Ativan, benzodiazepines, Valium, downers or nerve pills, or marijuana and spice. Something to remember though, marijuana and spice could be laced with fentanyl and you need to check for symptoms of opioid overdose. Some symptoms of opioid overdose would include pinpoint pupils and no breathing. Naloxone is only useful for opioid overdoses. Who's at risk? Individuals seeking narcotics from multiple providers or who are not taking their medications as prescribed users of drugs that were prescribed for others, users who inject drugs for greater effects, former users who begin using again. This is so critical. Someone who stops using opioids and then starts again is at extremely high risk of overdose. Patients using them for pain control who also have health issues such as sleep apnea, respiratory conditions such as COPD, and or combined opiates with sleep aids such as Ambien, benzodiazepines, and Ativan or alcohol. 
uh, incorrect use of pain patches, and accidental exposure to children. If children get these drugs, they can overdose and die. Side effects of opiates. After prolonged use of these substances, tolerance develops. This means that the person needs increasing amounts to achieve the same effects. Common side effects include drowsiness, lethargy, itching and flushing, dry mouth, constricted pupils, and constipation or difficulty having bowel movements. Some overdose symptoms, if the person is not responsive when shaken, not breathing well or not breathing at all, breathing less than six breaths per minute, having a bluish or cyanotic color of the skin, nails, or lips, having constricted pupils or small pupils. Ultimately, opioids kill by suppressing the drive to breathe. So Narcan nasal spray. It's an opioid antagonist. It can reverse opiate or opioid overdose effects. It can allow a person to control airway and breathe again. It's not effective for treatment of respiratory depression or altered mental status from other causes. Call 911. If you're alone, administer Narcan first, then call 911. Provide airway and respiratory support, which means rescue breathing, to the limit of your skills and reverse the cause of failed breathing. Narcan is for when the person is not responsive or not effectively breathing. Opioid use alone without other symptoms or signs of ineffective breathing is not an indication for Narcan. Other drug or non-opioid overdoses will not respond to Narcan and hypersensitivity to the drug is very rare. So how to administer Narcan? Remove the Narcan nasal spray from the box. Peel back the tab of the circle to open the Narcan nasal spray. Hold the Narcan nasal spray with your thumb on the bottom of the plunger and your first and middle fingers on either side of the nozzle. Gently insert the tip of the nozzle into either nostril. Tilt the person's head back and provide support under the neck with your hand. Gently insert the tip of the nozzle into one nostril until your fingers on either side of the nostril are against the bottom of the person's nose. Press the plunger firmly to give the dose of Narcan nasal spray. Remove the Narcan nasal spray from the nostril after giving the dose. Once Narcan is administered, a person needs to continue monitoring that person. Continue support of their airway and breathing as needed. Position person on their side with knees bent and hands under their head. If breathing and responsiveness does not occur within two to three minutes, place the person on their back and repeat administration of second Narcan nasal spray. Be cautious for, for potentially combative persons. The mental status and respiratory drive should improve after administration. When used, intranasal naloxone can cause symptoms of opioid withdrawal. That would include runny nose and sweating, nausea and vomiting, fast heart rate, shakes, agitation, irritability, and restlessness. Fear of causing withdrawal should not prevent use when the person is unresponsive. Opiate withdrawal is not life-threatening, but overdose is. After administering Narcan, turn over care to the emergency medical system. EMS and ER will report Narcan use to the Indiana State Department of Health. Make sure you restock your kit. And each kit has an approximate shelf life of two years. Keep in the box to protect from light. And the ideal storage temperature is 77 degrees Fahrenheit with uh, outliers of 59 degrees to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's talk about stigma. A person who has substance use disorder and overdoses on an opioid can't get help if they're dead. Naloxone and Narcan is a treatment tool that can help a person with substance use disorder survive and hopefully get them on the road to recovery. And as always, for further information, please go to lookupindiana.org.